Hello, namaste and welcome to this video series where we'll be focusing on the various underlying concepts of different methods used under the computational technique and demonstrate their applications by practicing some numerical problems. Well, today we will be looking at the conjugate gradient method. Well, the conjugate gradient method is one of the iterative methods with a high rate of convergence, which basically means that this method converges or approaches the solution at a faster rate, which again means using a fewer number of steps. Well, this method is one of the most beautiful applications of the concept of gradient for solving a specific class of a system of linear equations and optimization problems. In this video, we shall explain its underlying principles one step at a time. Firstly, we will illustrate why and how the gradient method can be used. Secondly, we will illustrate how the steepest descent method is used to solve the problems. And finally, we will talk about how we can make the steepest descent method more efficient by using the conjugate gradient method. Well, time to pause and reflect a bit. Before proceeding further in digging into this method, make sure that you actually know the concept of the gradient and why it gives the direction of the steepest increase. Well, if you don't already know it, we suggest that you watch some introductory videos of the concept on Khan Academy. Well, the links are provided in the description, do check them out. But if your concern is the algorithm only, please feel free to jump straight towards the end of the video. Now, without any further delay, let's jump into the topic. Okay, now suppose that you have a system of linear equation, which is given by the equation ax is equals to b, where a is a symmetric and positive definitive matrix, x is a vector of the unknowns and b is some known vector. Well, this is actually the case when you are solving the well-known equation k times u is equals to f, where k is the stiffness matrix, u is the vector of nodal displacements and f is the vector of nodal forces. Well, that is basically the stiffness equation. Well, solving the linear equation ax is equals to b is equivalent to finding the minimum of the quadratic form f of x is equals to half of x transpose times a times x minus b transpose times x plus c and its derivative that is its gradient is given by f dash of x is equals to ax minus and finding the minimum of f of x is the key to solving the system of linear equation ax is equals to b well now let us prove why it is so and to do this let us assume that a is a 2 by 2 matrix, x is a 2 by 1 vector and b is a 2 by 1 vector as well. Now substituting these values of a, x and b in the previously mentioned equation f of x is equals to half of x transpose times a times x minus b transpose times x plus c, we get the following results. After a few steps of matrix multiplication, you finally get this equation. Now, what is extremization? Well, we mentioned earlier that it was simply finding the gradient of a function. Well, in order to find the gradient of our given function f of x, we simply differentiate it with respect to the unknown variables. Now, taking x1 first, differentiating f with respect to x1, we get the following equation. Similarly, differentiating f with respect to x2 we get the following output. Now provided that a is a symmetric matrix, a12 is equals to a21. Well that is simply aij is equals to aji. Now using this condition in the previously found equations we get the following output. Simply substituting a12 by a21 we get the following output. Well, hope you guys are following us. Well, what to do next? For the extreme values of f of x, well, the gradient of f of x should be equals to, yeah, zero. Well, since we are dealing with vectors and matrix, 
we will have to equate the gradient of f of x with a null vector as shown in the screen. Well, the bold zero that you are seeing is basically a null vector. Now, equating with the null vector and substituting the values, we simply get this form. And this can be written as a times x is equals to b, which proves that our previously mentioned extremization function works. Well, this is actually the crux of the whole concept. Now you are up for further interesting applications of the concept of gradient and linear algebra. But before that, let us prove that the solution from ax is equals to b actually minimizes the function f of x. Well, this follows from the fact that a is a symmetric and also positive definitive matrix. Well, in short, the positive definitiveness implies that for any arbitrary vector z, z transpose times a matrix times the vector z again should always be greater than zero. Well, the value, if it's positive, then the matrix A is a positive definitive matrix. Now, to prove that x obtained from Ax is equals to b actually minimizes f of x, we have to show that f of x plus z is greater than f of x for any arbitrary vector z. So, so what do we do? Well, using the previously used extremization function and substituting x plus z instead of just x, we get the following output after a series of steps. Now, 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 for scalars such as x transpose times a times z. You can see this form of equation is derivable, right? Is it okay? Well, this can be obtained because a is a symmetric matrix and simply using the property of transposition, we get these outputs. Now, substituting these outputs in the previous equation, you get something like this. Hope you guys are following. Now, since ax minus b is equal to a null vector. Well, note that the bold zero you're seeing there is a vector. So this gives us f of x plus z is equal to f of x plus plus something, guys, plus something, plus half of z transpose times a times z. Now, since a is a positive definitive matrix, this expression of half of z transpose times a times z is always positive, which clearly implies that f of x plus z is greater than f of x. That is why f of x is always a minimum. Now, moving into the steepest descent method, we know that the gradient of f of x at a point gives the direction of the steepest ascent from that point, right? Well, that is, gradient of f of x is equals to ax minus b, which gives the direction of the steepest ascent. If so, what will be the direction of the steepest descent? Well, of course, it is negative of ax minus b. We are trying to minimize the function f of x, so let our initial guess be x0, x0, whatever you call that. Well, now at x0, the direction of the steepest descent is given by r0, which is equal to negative of a x0 minus b, which can simply be written as b minus a times x0. Now, let us assume that along this direction, f of x is minimized for a certain point, say x1, which is equal to x0 plus alpha0 times r0. Well, here, Alpha naught tells us where exactly f of x is locally minimized along r naught. Well, with that, simply using the following outputs, using the following obtained conditions in the extremization function with f of x1, we get the following output. Simply substituting the values, you get something like this. Well, now since alpha naught is the only variable present there, we can say f of alpha naught is equals to half of x naught transpose times a times x naught plus alpha naught times oh my god guys you can just clearly see that right well after a series of steps you simply obtain these 
can simply obtain this form. So, well, let's continue. So, for minimum value of f of alpha naught along the direction of r naught, which is given by derivative of f of alpha naught with respect to alpha naught, which we equate with zero. Now, equating with zero uh, using the above obtained equation and equating with zero, you get something like this. Now, here again, x naught transpose times a times r naught and b transpose times r naught, r scalars. So, 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 x naught transpose times a times r naught is equals to r naught transpose times a times x naught and b transpose r naught is equals to r naught transpose times b. Right? Yes. Guys, if you're having a hard time following me, you can just simply write down the steps and copy and that'll be clear. That'll be more clear and easy to understand. Well, uh, computational techniques uh, consist of a lot of mathematical writing, so it's a little hard to grasp simply looking at this. Well, after a series of steps again, guys, you obtain this form of equation. Now, substituting r naught is equals to b minus a times x naught. You get alpha naught is equals to r naught transpose times r naught divided by r naught transpose times a times r naught. Well, it's a simple equation that you can easily memorize. Now that we know alpha naught, our new guess of the minima along the direction r naught will be x1 is equals to x naught plus alpha naught times r naught. The new search direction from x1 shall be the direction of the steepest descent, that is, r1 is equals to b minus a times x1. Our target minimum along the direction r1 will be x2 is equals to x1 plus alpha 1 times r1. Guys, we are simply repeating the same process. Well, this is an iterative method, so you'll be simply repeating again and again and again till you converge to the point with uh, permissible tolerance. Well, here R1 tells us where exactly along the new search direction R1, the local minima x2 lies. Well, again, using the extremization function on x2, f of x2 is equals to half of x1 plus alpha 1 times r1 transpose times a times x1 plus alpha 1 times r1 minus b transpose times x1 plus alpha 1 times r1 plus c. Well, since alpha 1 is the only variable here in this equation, so finding f of alpha 1, you get something like this. You can clearly see on the screen, guys. You can practice it down in your copy and you will just point. Well, for minimization of f of alpha 1, uh, finding the derivative of f of alpha 1 with respect to uh, uh, alpha 1 and equating with 0, you get alpha 1 is equals to r1 transpose times r1 divided by r1 transpose times a times r1. So, now our guess of minimum will be x2 is equals to alpha 1 plus, sorry, x2 is equals to x1 plus alpha 1 times r1. Then we calculate our new search direction r2, which is given by b minus a times x2. Again, we find x3 using x2 plus alpha 2 times r2, where alpha 2 is given by r2 transpose times r2 divided by r2 transpose times a times r2 and so on guys oh my god i'm tired well we repeat this method until our new search direction that is r i is equals to zero which means that we do not have to search anymore well we have reached the solution now the next thing to know in this concept is the orthogonality of the consecutive search directions which basically means that suppose you have r1 as the initial search direction and r2 as the second search direction then they are supposed to be perpendicular 
according to the sponsor. Well, let's prove it now. To prove this property, we shall show that x not transpose times x1 is equal to 0, which is essentially showing that the dot product of the two consecutive such directions is 0, that is, they are orthogonal. Well, x not transpose, sorry, r not transpose times r1 is equal to r not transpose times b minus a x1, which is equal to r not transpose times b minus a x naught plus alpha naught times r naught and so on guys so on so on so on well since r naught is equals to b minus a times x naught and alpha naught is equals to r naught transpose times r naught divided by r naught transpose times a times r naught substituting these values you finally come to this point zero yes the dot product has found to be zero well, this proves our claim that they are actually orthogonal to each other. Well, that is all, guys. That is all. Well, if you simply want to know the algorithm for this D best descent method, here is the list. Firstly, make sure that an initial guess of the solution is taken, which is x naught. Secondly, such direction is taken to be r naught, which is equals to b minus a times x0. Thirdly, the surging parameter alpha0 is equal to r0 transpose times r0 divided by r0 transpose times a times r0. In fourth point, fourth step, now new guess is given by x1 which is equal to the previously used x0 plus alpha0 times r0. New search direction is given by r1 which is equal to b minus a times x1. And sixth step, you find the new searching parameter alpha1, which is given by r1 transpose times r1 divided by r1 transpose times a times r1. Now the new guess again is x2 is equal to x1 plus alpha1 times r1, and so on and so on and so on until you get r i r something equal. To zero. Yes. R something zero. And we finally reach the solution. Guys, we finally reach the solution point and it's over. Finally. Oh my god. Woo! This was hard. Thank you guys for watching this video. Do like, comment, and subscribe. And please, please, please share this video because I'm Tired. <laughs> you.